Yeah, I'll read. Yo, 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 what's up, y'all? Uh, this is Home Run with Smooth. I got with me, Shar. How are you doing today? Dang, I had a thumb. Uh, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Why does that happen wrong when, I, when we do this? Every single time. <laughs> oh, facts. <laughs> I'm doing good. Yeah, you know, making it. Yeah, yeah. What was you saying earlier? These flight prices is crazy. <laughs> Man, some they have lost their rabbit ass mind. I swear, like these prices, mm-hmm. they don't they don't want to have these 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 hot boy and hot girl summer. Apparently, uh-uh. <laughs> you're gonna be at home, your homebody summer. Right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, they lost their mind. It's like there there are prices to places that are like double what they normally are. Yeah, I I don't I don't even I don't even get it. I don't know how like things got so out of hand. Like these gas prices are out of hand because there's actually no actual reason for it. The price of gasoline actually didn't change that much. Like the price of oil, I mean, didn't actually change that much. It actually didn't. Yeah. They're just they're just wilding for the sake of wilding. Pretty much at this point. Yep. Much. Yeah, so we have some uh we're 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 the reason for this episode, okay? You guys see the title. All right. So what's America is losing its mind, okay? In in the span of less than 24 hours, okay? We had three mass shootings, okay? I don't think a lot of people know that. Like cuz the main one that's getting attention is the one that's in Buffalo, New York. We, that one Get got all the attention, all the attention. However, and that guy was racist and he was killing black people. Then you yeah. had a church in uh, a church in Laguna, Laguna something, California, Laguna something, California. The name escapes me. It's not Laguna Beach though. Laguna, California. The guy goes into the to a Taiwanese church and starts shooting them. And the only reason less people died there and it didn't get as much news coverage is because uh, it's because this guy, um, Dr. Wing, Wing, I don't know how to say his name. I'm not going to mess his name up um, any more than I already have. He uh, he ran and attacked the um, the gunman. He took a shot, though, and um, he was pronounced dead at the scene. However, they were able from his efforts to be able to um, come together and attack the man and subdue him and tie him up on the ground. Um, and the person that did that shooting was a Chinese man, um, an older Chinese man, and he basically hated the Taiwanese, um, which which shows the the, the hatred that um, some people and the, well, it shows the overarching beef and problems between uh, relations, like political relations between. Uh, Taiwan and China, but the but the and then there's also the Houston flea market. There was also a shooting there. Um, yeah. I don't even have the I don't even have the full details for that. Like because there was so much going on, like it was just it was just impossible to keep up with. And my main focus was on Buffalo, New York, but I seen the other two pass my timeline, so I just didn't want to not give them their uh, their due justice. Um, and yeah. talk about those because those those are bad as well. But um, to focus on the main point here, that dude is sick, and I wish they would just dig a hole and toss him in it and walk off, like a really deep hole out in the middle yeah. of nowhere. Because hey, they talk said he got away with it, right? Say what? Yeah, he got away with it, right? Like uh, he he got like they let him go as 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 like a free man, right? Or am I getting the the shootings mixed up? Oh no 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 no! Both people both people are in jail. Both people are in police custody. 
Hmm. Both of them. I saw something on social media about one of them getting away with um getting away with it and walking away a free man. Mm 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 mm. Neither of them. Neither of those two. It might have been the Houston one. Um, but yeah, mm-hmm. both both of them both of them are in uh both of them are in police custody because the one dude he was uh he was arrested outside the supermarket but he planned on going out and killing more people. Um, yeah, he planned on going out and killing more black people. And my thing is like they can try and do an insanity plea all they want to, but the wildest, most racist thing I've ever seen on video was this dude shot this black dude that just. He just happened to walk out the bathroom. I think. I think that's where he was coming from. He's coming out the bathroom, shot him in the head. He was gone. He was gone. Then turns to the store clerk, the store guy that's working there, and goes, looks at him, and then goes, "Oh my God, sorry." Like, because he was white. Because his whole intention was killing black people. And then, if you say he's not racist, he had the N word written on his gun. He had uh, some other. Um, Save, save our white, y'all are killing white people. Um, some saying like that on his gun. Then he had, uh, man, some he had something else on his gun, and then he also had the names of other uh racist killers like Dylan Roof. I was like, what? Wild, so wild. Yeah. <sighs> and he streamed it on Twitch. That was live streamed. That's crazy as hell. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I, I just feel I really feel for the families, and I guess my my question, my question to you is like, do you mm-hmm. think that more black people, more people, more black people, um, well, more people being armed, in particular, more black people being armed, would solve this? necessarily no because hmm. well let me say it this way i come from a military family so my parents are huge gun advocates like it's your sec your second amendment right you have the right to bear arms right mm-hmm. and they are always that's something they always preach however <laughs> not every um state is open carry state and is it worth like, because here's the thing. I feel like in those types of situations, had a black person come to defend, like mm-hmm. we're already in the, we're, all, we're always on the bad end of the stick anyway. Yeah. So would, would that have just shifted the blame towards the black person who defended everybody? It may have saved more lives, but I do think that maybe because I feel like in the past, what, five years, these mass shootings mm-hmm. have been out of control. Perhaps they should give security guards guns because I don't think the security guard had a gun, right? Like that they shot and killed. So, so the the security guard was a ret- retired police officer. He had a gun. However, the guy that came into the store was wearing body armor. So when he shot him, the bullet did nothing. All the dude did okay, was so- turn and shoot him. So my my, my answer to your question is yes and no. Um, the the answer is no because I just feel like, unfortunately, we live in an evil and racist society where mm-hmm. we're we're going to have, like these 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 type of shootings, are very random and, and sporadic and out of the blue. Mm-hmm. And so I don't really know. Hmm, I don't really know how like more people having guns would be the answer. However, Mm -hmm. I do think that the, there was a bill that Trump passed when he was president that made it Mm -hmm. way too easy to access guns. I do think that there needs to be some type of system put in place where you go through some kind of mental analysis or something instead of just, oh, you're old enough to have a gun. Here you go. Like I remember Trump made it like way too easy and, and, because of that, there are people running around here who have no business having guns at all. True. So I do think they need to, to, to reevaluate the uh, process they're using for giving people guns in general. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, I I agree. I agree with that. I agree with that. That's that's one main thing that America needs, like better, yeah. better uh, background checks and mental health screening for getting a weapon, because some of these people just don't deserve it. And then you got to look at this guy. He's 18. Like, I'm like, what? Like, what? Where were you at to where you became radicalized to the point where, you know, what I'm saying you're that's like, yo, I, I, I hate I hate these people. You know what I'm saying? That's and learned then, behavior. Yeah. Hmm? That's yeah. learned behavior. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, gotta be. And then um, and then he drove three hours. He drove three hours to do this killing. Just to find black people. Just to find yeah. black people. Yeah, just to find a black neighborhood. He actually there's this home uh I don't know if the guy's I'm I'm not gonna say that guy's homeless. Um, there's this black guy who who he ran into earlier. The, the the day before. So I guess he went to case the case the place to make sure it actually was, you know what I'm saying, a good place to go kill black people. Like that's how insane this is. Like this is premeditated. I don't care what oh, level 100%. of insanity what what level of insanity they try to give him. No, this was premeditated. This was very planned and thorough. He's not crazy. You know what I'm saying? He knew he had enough common sense to go there the day before and case the place hopped out the gu- hopped out the uh the vehicle in the middle of a crosswalk and then they start shooting black people like i, I like that's 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 so crazy Cause, okay so to answer the question though that i asked you um mm-hmm. having more guns right it's absolutely helpful right it's absolutely so everybody can defend themselves it's that's that's that makes sense on paper. Yeah. However, one big one, when that bullet sound off and you're just not and you're not ready for it, you're in the grocery store. OK, that's the reality of it. You're in the grocery store shopping for food. That is the last place you think you're going to be shot, especially on routine. You're like, yo, I'm just going to go in here. I'm going to grab this toothpaste. I'm going to grab some salmon. I'm going to grab these vegetables. You know what I'm saying? Get some rice. You know what I'm saying? Maybe, maybe get me some more cereal. You know, you're, you're yeah. thinking about those types of items. You're not thinking, yo, I need to head, I need to head over to the other section and find me some bullets. Like you're not necessarily thinking, and even even in that regard, you don't think there's a bullet that's gonna come for you. Not in the middle of a store, and yeah. when when I see it that way, I don't I don't think a lot of people realize. They say, "Oh, I'll do this, I'll do that." Till the moment bullets are actually flying, you don't know what you'll do. You really mm-hmm. don't know what you'll do. It's not till you put in that situation. And having yeah. the option, having the option, I believe having an option is great. But also at the same time, are you going to the range enough to be even, even be able to shoot good enough? Right. And, then, and then to shoot somebody in body armor. There was a, a retired police officer that didn't get off a good enough shot and he's dead. You think you got enough training just casually to where you're going to be able to hurt that same person with something yeah. that you can carry in the store? Like the type of caliber you would have needed, he, that security guard would have needed a forty-four. He would have needed a magnum to get to like actually like hit that dude and make him stop, make his body buckle. But he, he didn't have that. He had like a, a standard nine. Like if you got body armor on, like yeah, it hurts, mm-hmm. but it's not gonna stop nobody. Not in body armor. Um, and then uh, I would say I would say my my next point is um. I, I kind of see it being a bit more chaotic because let's say there's somebody shooting, right? Mm-hmm. Everybody pulls out the gun and they start shooting back. What if you accidentally shoot at somebody else and then they start shooting at you? Like you run the risk of turning that whole store into straight chaos. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yep. That, that, I don't trust that's people. what I was thinking. Of. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't trust people. I, I, I don't, I don't trust people, but that's I firmly sure. believe if you're at home, great, have a gun. Because you know clearly who the threats are. You know clear as day who the threats are. But once you're yeah. out there in public, you you could be a threat yourself if you don't know how to aim. Yeah. Or you don't have a clear shot, the dude shooting through shooting through a crowd and you just start shooting back because he you can see him. Like you didn't shot other people now. Exactly. 
Exactly. And now the police are confused and, talking about there's multiple shooters. It's a sick, sick world. It really is. And every and I, I have noticed that with these shooters, there's always a commonality. When you talk to the families, mm -hmm. oh, you know, like they, they start explaining behavior that obviously there was something wrong there, but they overlooked. And then they, they left them. They like let them have access to things they shouldn't have access to. Yeah. Oh, he was a good kid. He didn't have any friends. Like, <laughs> you know, like there's always some commonality. And I think in general, people in general uh, just overlook the signs. And mm. that's that. That's a whole different cat uh, 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 conversation. But it's just a lot of background work that has to be done overall to stop this. But mm -hmm. when it comes to hate crime, hate crime is a hard one because there's always going to be a, a, a racist person. And you never know how yeah. far they're going to go. Yeah, yeah, that that's one thing. That's one thing we're stuck with. We're always gonna have somebody with us that's that's gonna be racist, unfortunately. And I mean, yeah. like, the only way I see this becoming better is unfortunately, like, those generations that that are still teaching that racism, that still teaching that behavior, those old school gen generations, they have to all die. Like, in, including including the including the ones. And like, and, and this sound, this is gonna sound crazy, um, but like, hear me out. Like, even, even the people that suffer from it, unfortunately, they they have to pass too. Like, we have to get to a, a place where we can just start fresh because you you have people that's been hurt and it, their 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 feeling is absolutely valid. Their feeling is valid, and then you have the people that are that have done the pain. You know what I'm saying? And now they're trying to coexist with these people and say, oh, I'm better now. Like, you yeah. can't just do that. Like, those, like, I don't think, like, I'm going to say this, like, Jim Crow is my grandma's, like, when she was born. Like, that's her era. Like, my grandparents, that's their era, is Jim Crow. That's their era. Like, so, so no matter what you say, it's not that distant. That is my grandma. That is my old grandma. So then yeah. to, say, to say that, oh, my grandparents weren't racist. Where, where did they live again? Where did they live <laughs> again? What mm -hmm. time were they in? Because it was just legal to just be it. Exactly. Exactly. Yep. Like, you're not going to tell me that your people were above above everything like your people were the abolitionists your people were the the people that were that were helping us out like no no you don't you don't get to say that you don't get to say that because you don't know yeah. and they're not gonna tell you yeah pretty much yep yeah. yeah yeah and so to to fix it to fix that we, we will have to get to a point where all those people are gone and also the next thing is um, to get effective laws that can actually like pro attack this in a progressive manner, we're gonna have to just get rid of all of Congress. I I am for all the House of Representatives, all of the senators, all of them, scratch them, start over, just all of them, just mass reelection, all of them, all of them. Yeah, I agree. All of them, and the, everybody the that has a seat gotta go. Can't re can't rerun. The entire system has to be rebuilt, unfortunately, and that's we're starting there, but we have we have some work to do. Mm -hmm. Yep, and and honestly, and honestly, what I what I would like to see, what I would like to see, because the Supreme Court is nine people, correct? I'm not good with with, with that stuff, but I believe you're oh, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Supreme Court, I believe is nine people. What I would like to see is. All the justices, thank you for your service. All of them, scratch them all. The Democrats, you get four. The Republicans, you get four. The people we vote on the last one. The people we vote for the last one. That's the fairest way to do it. Four Republicans, four Democrats, and we vote on the last one. However that ends up, bet. Mm -hmm. Bet. So if our, if our justice dies, we get to vote on a brand new one. If their justice dies, you get to pick another one. Cool. Cool, it's fair. It's fair. Yeah. I think I think that is the fairest way to go about it. But I don't think 
this country is ready for what's actually fair and equitable. And, and oh. that has been a that has been a that has been a long term problem, a systemic problem. And that's how you get people with this idea that, oh my God, the, these minorities, they're taking out my race. You know what I'm saying? We're, we're um white people, we're we're dwindling, we're dwindling, we're becoming so insignificant. We'll never, we'll never be able to population wise become what we should be. News flash, you're the minority of the world. Mm-hmm. You're mm-hmm. technically the minority of the world. Yeah, South, yep. South America is all Hispanics. North America was all Native Americans, but we see what happened there. Um, <laughs> then you have Central America. That's that's mostly people of of Hispanic descent. You know what I'm saying? Like you have you have that you have that um, that era or whatever. But most of those people are still technically black because when you go down to South America, like they they be looking like me and you. That it yeah. really they really do they really do i'm just saying um mm-hmm. then africa africa that's the home base that's all black people besides the places where white people just drop themselves off at um then you have india that's all indians china we all know there's like a billion chinese people everybody knows that's the that's the main thing people be talking about man there's like a billion people in china <laughs> everybody <laughs> said Everybody say that. You know what I'm saying? You have the Japanese, you have the Koreans, you know what I'm saying? Like the Asian mm-hmm. population, they're pre- they're really big. So the on- the only places you actually exist are Russia, Europe, Australia, and America. And guess mm-hmm. what? When you look at all the and Canada, okay, Canada. I forgot. I forgot Canada. Hi Canada. Um so <laughs> When you look at those places, population total wise, they don't even come close to India, China, China, Middle East. I left the Middle East out of there. If you go, if you go India, China, if you go India, China, Africa, that's most of the world. That's that's most of the world. Like of the seven billion people. Yeah, most places you travel, they don't even like white people. (laughs) Like they hate white people. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And to um yeah, yeah, and it just is what it is. Like I don't know what else to tell people. Like this is this is the reality. And as long as people continue to just not acknowledge this, like I know for some people that may listen to this, this may hurt your feelings. I don't care. I don't care. Like mm-hmm. we still have people running around shooting people just because they just happen to be brown. Like that's nuts. That is wow. nuts. We're, we are all human beings, and we all come from dirt. <laughs> why am I still saying that in 2022? Like there was whole marches and everything to say, "Oh, we're human beings. We're human beings." There was a whole march to just say, w- "Women are like deserve property," like, and we still like n- no on abortion rights, no on black people. You know what I'm saying? Like. And then, and then, uh, what kills me? What kills me is a lot of a lot of uh, minority groups don't even realize this. Like they're just like they'll be so, they'll be kind of they're not as um, um, active in black issues because they don't think it affects them. No, we we are the domino. Like if something falls in black people's favor, guess what? You guys all benefit. But if something goes bad, yeah, and it affects us, you're next. You're next. Like, think about that. Once, like, let's say they were able to eliminate us all. They were able to kill all the black people. They got their dream. Guess who's next? Man, we're tired of all these Mexicans. Let's get rid of them. We're tired of all these Asians. Let's get rid of them. Like, they're, it's, they're going to go after you next. So you either you yeah. join the home team and protect yourself. You know what I'm saying? Like I or you don't. But I, I don't understand why a lot of people vote against their interests. Um, and I'm not saying like voting, voting, voting Democrat or Republican, because both of both of them is kind of trash, like in, in totality. You know what I'm saying? Fact. Yes, both of both of them are both of them are a, a lot of trash. Um, but I will mm-hmm. say um with without um yeah, there's no other way to say this. It. Like the Republican side is just blatant. 
It just blatant. It y'all got blatant racism in the side, in the conservative side. You have blatant racism. You ask the neo Nazis where they at. Oh, I like conservatives. Yes, KKK where they at. Oh, I like conservatives. Like you, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like that's just two. This is two. This is two. I didn't even get into other fringe groups. Those two are yeah. like, yo, yeah. we're conservative. <laughs> that speaks volumes. You can't say, oh, well, we're the pro- we're the party of Abraham Lincoln. No, you're not. And even he didn't even like black people. He just didn't want them. He, it was an economic thing. Like it was an economic thing. And people and y'all went to war over money because y'all got tired of black people being counted as three fifths when you said you own them as property, which didn't even make sense. Like, oh, I want I want wow. my property to have voting power, but they're not gonna vote. We're gonna vote for them. Makes no sense. No, it makes no sense at all. It really doesn't. It really doesn't. Yeah. Um, um, I do want to say like thoughts and prayers for the family, um, the families of the people that were lost um, and a speedy recovery for those that are recovering um, from all three of these instances, because I've never I've never heard or seen anything like this ever. And um, I hope that. Um, I, I just hope that things get better. Because um, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Makes you scared to have kids, man. Honestly. Yeah, you know, on the one hand, I'm like, oh, I can't live in fear. But but then as a black person, like it's still in the back of your head every time you leave the house. Mm-hmm. And I think that's one of the reasons I have yet to leave um DC. Because it's like the one place I feel safe. <laughs> you know, like mm-hmm. it's a very progressive area and there's, I feel safe here. And mm-hmm. every time I think of move, the places I want to move to that are more affordable, there's mm-hmm. less and less black people. And these are, this is the way we have to think as black people. We can't yeah. just, oh, I'm just going to pick up and move here. We have to think about things like that. Yeah. Yeah. I've never, like, I've never went in like, you know what I'm saying? Like, well, I'm not saying I've never, I'm saying like, for the audience, for the audience, I'm gonna ask y'all this question, and then we kind of we can kind of leave this episode here. Like, have y'all ever like when you go, when you go to go somewhere? Like, do you ever think about okay, like what what's okay when I look at this school? What type of school is this? You know what I'm saying? What type of environment is this for 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 where I'm going? You know what I'm saying? Like, never had to look at yeah. the school. Did you ever have to look at um? Uh, the area of the house that you're moving to, like actually like scope out the neighbors, like really scope out the neighborhood like that. Because I don't, I don't think people have to go as in depth as black people have to. Yes. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of black people, um, I commend their courage for moving to those areas and, you know, and trying to prove a point. But um, as you can see with the little black boy that whipped on the door, and then and then whipped the person's car, right? Like left a scratch on their car, and then the, the guy went to go confront the dad, and then the dad pulled a gun, and then ac- didn't accidentally fired it, and they just arrested him. You know what I'm saying? Because that racism is learned behavior. Like he came over there to to whip their daughter. Came over there with a whip. My, I, what your child is nine or ten. Why is your nine or ten year old coming after another kid with a whip? A whip. It'd be different if he just walked over there, no whip, and was like, "Yo, I'm mad at your daughter or child or whatever, daughter son." When it's like, "Yo, I want to fight them." Like he's just mad. That's that's different. That's just some kid stuff. But to say like, "Yo, I'm coming over here with a whip," like bring bring your daughter outside. She needs to be. She needs to learn her place. Like. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Ooh, I, remember, um, I remember growing up, for the most part, we lived in um, predominantly white neighborhoods. Now, there mm-hmm. were there were some neighborhoods we lived in where it was, you know, um, 
a lot of black people, but there were some, there were other neighborhoods we lived in, it was predominantly white. And I remember when I was younger, like those white people could not stand when we moved in. And my dad, like, I remember there was one time my, my brother was playing basketball in our driveway and the basketball accidentally went into the neighbor's yard and like, he got mad and my dad came out there and checked the shit out of that white man. And I remember yeah. being a little girl and not understanding why he was going in so hard on this white man. <laughs> And then mm -hmm. when I got older, it started making more sense. Like, oh, I see. My dad had to like he had to assert himself and let him know you're not gonna you're not gonna fuck with my kids. You're not gonna fuck with us. Yeah, like that. I'm not one. Because and, and and after he checked him like that, that, that white man didn't, didn't speak to us. He didn't try it again. You know, like, but um, he had to be that way. You have to be that way with 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 right. those, those those good time boys and who really would mm -hmm. try you. That's the only way they get it. It's the only way they get it. Um, right. but I, I do want to add that, like, when you were saying, have they ever had to think about when they're moving into a neighborhood or what school districts, we even have to think about things when we're going on road trips of where not to stop. Like, I know mm -hmm. I have been on road trips and I'm like, um, and I had to use bathroom and I'm like, I'm not stopping in this area. Cause you, cause you already know it might be hillbilly country mm -hmm. and you don't want to be the only black person in the, in the store. So you keep mm -hmm. driving until you get to the closest, like, the closest gas station that's that that mm -hmm. you feel safe with, right like i right. remember i moved to um florida for a year and i didn't realize I, I did like the um you can ship your car on the train okay and so so from here from dc to orlando well uh, like a town outside of orlando actually where trayvon martin which was shot and killed um mm. you can put your car on the train and and you get on the train with it and then they just unload it for you when you get to your destination. Mm -hmm. Well, I didn't know that this was the town. I didn't realize that it was a town that Trayvon Martin was like shot in. And mm. so I literally, but you could tell when when you, I was driving from the Confederate flags, and like you could tell it was like Trump territory. So I was like, let me just get out of this area and in, into mm -hmm. civilization where there are other black people and there's a gas uh, like a well-known gas station not one of these little because i need to guess i was like i'm gonna drive as far as i can mm -hmm. to get away from this this little podunk I gas station because i'm not about to get out of this car i do not feel safe in this area we have to think about right. shit like that like do, do yeah. they know what that's like yeah, yeah, because even even now, like what you said with the gas station thing, like when I went to Savannah this weekend, like, you know, what I'm saying I'm driving through basically the backwaters of South Carolina and and Georgia. And I'm like, I can't I can't stop here. Like, yeah, you know, what I'm saying I yeah. cannot get out my car here. Like I had to pee like I held it for another 15 minutes, like just to get to another bathroom that actually mm -hmm. works safe yeah liable this is the kind of shit we have to think about this is kind of especially still in 2022 it's fucking wild it really is um or even like thinking about like for instance i really love um houston but mm -hmm. i know that if you go an hour outside of houston you're no longer in houston you're not gonna see many black people and it's gonna be a whole different side of texas oh, yeah. <laughs> you know like it's stuff like that we have to think about mm-hmm yeah, cause they they're like they they're still trying to keep um Austin like a certain type of way because there's zoning issues like that they have to keep the black population kind of like over here, and then they have the other stuff going on over here like they. Excuse so, me. So things like, for instance, like um, because I'm from they Tennessee. The freeway. Like I like I'm from Tennessee, right? Mm -hmm. But if, every time you look at the Tennessee map, when people yeah. vote. Nashville's blue and 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 Memphis is blue, but every town outside of those two towns are mm -hmm. red. <laughs> and they're yeah. always gonna be red. But those are the only two if I if I had to move back to Memphis, I mean uh, to, to Tennessee, if I had to move back, the only place mm -hmm. I would feel safe moving back is Nashville. And that's because that's where black people are there's enough of us and and you know, like I feel safe there. Anywhere outside of there. No, like I already know, absolutely not. <laughs> I'm going to Nashville in the middle of July. Hey. Yeah, I'm going to Nashville. It's gonna, it's gonna be lit. It's gonna be lit. It's yeah, gonna be lit. I, I already, already have my, I already have my hotel room and everything. Just like, yes. just like for DC, DC, I'm gonna be there for the 17th to the 20th. 
Mm -hmm. like, yeah, you know so, all for Juneteenth. So, should yeah, be I, Nashville's a um, one thing. I was just telling somebody this the other day. As a black person in Nashville, you have to know like the black people to know where to go to do the black things. They're mm -hmm. not like unlike DC. You could just walk into any bar and you're you're gonna meet a a black person, right? It's not mm -hmm. like that in Nashville. You have to know the people that know the stuff that's going on. <laughs> but mm -hmm. uh, that's where all of my, my my good friends live. Yeah. So um, so funny story. First time I went to DC, like I was there, and um, it was kind of like an overnight trip. Like I was there one night, uh, I was there the next day, and then I left the following day. So so I got it like a day and a half ish. That first night, I just walked into some random bar because I was hungry. And um, this is before DoorDash and all of that. So I'm like, I'm walking down the street, like um, the Capitol is to my left, right. Capitol is to my right. So I'm coming down, like past, mm -hmm. past the White House, whatever. And I'm just mm -hmm. looking for like just anywhere that was open that served food. And I see this pub and I'm like, oh, okay, I'll go in here. I must have went in there and must have realized like, oh, black people don't come in here at all. Um, but, but I'm like, but... I'm hungry, so I'm finna see if they got some chicken tenders, and I'm finna, I'm finna get these chicken tenders and get the help, keep it up out of here. Like, um, but the bartender, yeah. the bartender ended up being very nice. He was like, "Yo," he's like, "Yeah, you want a beer?" It's like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." And he like, gave yeah, me a sample. So, but see, but see, the it's a difference between going into a bar in DC, and you're the only black person, and going to a bar somewhere like, uh. For instance, Atlanta or or Dallas, and you're the only black person. It's a completely different vibe. Completely oh, yeah. different. <laughs> I, agree. I agree. I agree. You're not gonna you're not gonna hear complaining to me with that one. You're right. You're yeah. absolutely right. Yeah. The the, the, the white right. people here, they're they're all about progression and like I have been to plenty for the most part, I hang out with black people. Mm -hmm. Um and I have been, you know, the few times I have gone to like events where there's uh, predominantly white people and it's not, they're not, it's, you know, like if you're not used to them, you would think they're trying, they're trying hard to be this way, but they are literally just so progressive. You could be talking to them and then they start getting on Black Lives Matter and stuff. And and mm -hmm. if you're not used to those type of people at first, like, you know, when I first moved here, I was yeah. I'm like, why are you talking about this shit? And then I realized, no, they're just actually that progressive. Like they are that, they're yeah. passionate about right yeah. for, for, for everybody <laughs> yeah that's why dc needs statehood <laughs> yeah. DC statehood so we can get some more senators we I mean, fire yeah. matter of fact Even give, when I give, to, uh, give dc and puerto rico statehood at the same time matter of fact give it give guam give guam some too give guam some love too it's gonna be crazy it's gonna be crazy <laughs> yeah. You want to talk about people pissed off? Pissed off. This country don't represent me anymore. Because <laughs> Puerto, Puerto Rico is blue. Uh, what is that? D.C. is blue. Guam mm -hmm. is blue. Like, both of them places are blue. That's why they'll never, they'll never, they'll never get a blue. Huh? Is Hawaii blue? Is Hawaii yeah, blue? Hawaii, blue. Hawaii, Hawaii is democratic every time. Just like Alaska is red every time. Just which is weird as hell. I don't know why. For some reason, I don't. I never expect that from Alaska. <laughs> no, it, it actually makes why? sense because you got to think like all there is is cold. Okay, mm -hmm. like freezing, freezing cold. Black people don't like the cold like that. That's one. <laughs> like that's just, that's just one. That's one. Two. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Like. There's all this like just just hunting and all that stuff. You know who that's gonna attract. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. it, it it has all it has the recipe for everyone that just likes guns and and likes the wilderness and being cold and chopping firewood and putting it in your fireplace. Like people, yeah, you gotta play yeah. there. You gotta play I mean, you can wrestle a polar bear every now and then, but it's all good. <laughs> And on that note. <laughs> yeah, and on that note, and on that note, hey, y'all, thanks for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, we are out of here.